Hello, and welcome to the show. Replays, just about function-ish on Forza Motorsport, so it is time to do a relay race. One of our favourite things on these games. The rules are simple. We're in teams of four. Uh, each vehicle must complete a lap, and for this session, you must use a C-Class, a B-Class, an A-Class, and an S-Class. For our first race, I was, of course, on Orange Team, and I was running my A-Class Lancia Delta. I figured the all-wheel drive acceleration box would probably do me quite well for this sort of thing. Now, I was the only A-Class runner running uh, in this first stint. Uh, we would launch the Delta uh, clean into the lead. Longbow was chasing with the Mazda. That was a B-Class car, while the other two teams uh, were sending out their slowest cars, their C-Class cars. Now, strategy plays a very, very big part in this. In theory, the most efficient way, the best way to go, would be run your slow cars first and gradually get faster as you go through, finish with your S-Class car. The problem is, if every team does the same thing, you end up fighting each other. And when you have, for example, two C-Class cars like this on track together, you end up costing yourself time. So really, you don't want to be running... <laughs> you want to be running a different class of cars to the other vehicles, and you want to be costing yourself the least amount of time possible. It might not be much here, as you see. The Lamborghini trying to find its way past the Mustang, and it just about <laughs> manages to make the pass stick. It might not be a huge amount of time, but every second counts when it comes to this. Uh, so by the end of the first lap, I had made a bit of a gap, but honestly, it'd been a bit underwhelming from my Lancia. I hadn't really pulled that far away uh, from the white team's car, and they were now unleashing their S-Class car. <laughs> the Jag would go soaring uh, past our B-Class Ford, and it would take the lead. I mean, that's no big surprise. We had hoped for a much bigger lead for the handover, but yeah, this is what we got. At the end of the day, we we're going to have to try and make the most of this one. Uh, further back, and I mean, you know, we were a couple of classes up on this lot. The next group would hand over. Purple team would send out uh, their A-Class. Up next, the Ferrari would launch clean, while the black team were going for that standard strategy. Start with a C-Class car, now run their B-Class car, and gradually get faster as you go along. A solid plan, and at this point, they now found themselves in clean air with no one else to, to have to battle with, so to speak. Up at the front, the Jaguar was leading the way, trying to build as bigger a gap as it possibly could. A little error, though. Uh, just, it's a very easy corner to do it. A very easy corner to do it, but just a little bit a little bit wide on the exit for the Jag. Cost it a small amount of time. Not the furthest adventure we've ever seen in that particular corner, but it was, yeah, just a that little bit of, uh, of time loss as they head towards the final corner. Again, all mixed up in terms of uh, what cars would be going next. White team would hand over uh, to their C-Class car, the Porsche. Uh, orange team, we would have our C-Class car going out next, the Mazda RX-8. Uh, purple team uh, were going to be, well, they'd already got their C-Class car out of the way, so they were handing over to their B-Class car, and you see the gap that that B-Class car was now going to have to try and close in. The thing is, for white team, they only had an A-Class car to finish. All of us, all the other teams had saved their fastest car, their S-Class car, for last. That's generally the favoured strategy. Uh, the black team was a fair way back, but that was also understandable. They'd used their two slowest cars. Uh, they were, they now had the kind of fastest car on the track there, Aston Martin was going to attempt to hunt down the vehicles ahead. For us, an orange team, the main goal was stay as close as you could to the white team. We knew we were going to be having a, well, stay as close as you could to white team, try and stay ahead of purple team. Basically, we had an advantage. We had a car advantage over white team, a class advantage, if you like, going into the final round. Both the cars currently on circuit were C-class. So they weren't, you know, close to the... They weren't slowing each other down at this stage. In fact, the Mazda... I, I, they do like the RX-8 in this game, actually. Pretty good car. Uh, was gradually catching up towards the leader a little bit. Uh, they were setting a good pace. The... Uh, Dodge the Stealth was closing in, but as we hand it over, it would be white team that would take the lead, but they didn't have a particularly big gap whatsoever. Black Black team had caught up as well as they launched their S-Class car. It was going to be a hell of a job for white team to try and make this work. At the end of the day, they had an A-Class car. I think it was in Pega uh, driving that A-Class car, was trying <laughs> to fend off from Nine Tails in a Viper and Stevie in a, I think it was Stevie in a 911 race car. This was always going to be a very, very tough order. White would have wanted a much bigger lead 
going into this. At the end of the day, you would have wanted a much bigger lead, a much bigger gap back to the S-Class cars. It was not to be uh, for <laughs> the for the Coronet as the Viper would come past on the outside. The Porsche would send it to the inside into the same corner and it would now come down to a two-way battle. Well, unless they took each other out, of course, there's always that potential. Uh, the Viper much faster in a straight line. The Porsche with an awful lot more grip into the corners with a couple of corners to go. It was definitely very, very close at this one. The 911 a little bit too far back, though, to really send it. Could carry a lot of mid-corner speed, but not quite able to get alongside uh, through any of this. Uh, the, the Dodge will be still in the background at the end of the day as we head through the final corner. The Porsche couldn't do it, and it would be a victory for the Viper. The Porsche would have to settle for a second place. The Coronet would hold on to third. The Ferrari, uh, driven by, by the, the black team, just did not quite have the pace at the end to really catch up, to really get involved in this one. It certainly had been a close finish, though. So, we'd seen how strategies had played out in the first race. As we head into the second race, some tweaks and some different ones were being were being done. Purple team were sending out their S-Class car first. Now this is also another solid strategy. Uh, you send your fastest car out first because it can just run in clean air. When you, If you send it out later, it's going to have to, or likely to be, overtaking cars. And even though it might overtake a car pretty quickly, it might still have to lift, it might still have to slow down mid-corner in various places. So if it runs out on its own at the front, well, it gets clean air, it stays out of trouble. Uh, and the rest of us, well, we were the Orange team, we were going for the traditional strategy of start off slow and get faster, we were sending out our C-Class in this one, uh, while the, the white and black team were sending out their two B-Class cars. Now, purple team did have to have a slight stand in, Chris was driving in, in purple team with their A-Class car, uh, had got the tyres on wrong. It was on medium tyres rather than the softs, and, well, every second counts, essentially. So while the Diablo was off doing its mission, doing its lap, uh, there was a quick panic of, can we get the Falcon into the pit lane, get the tyres changed, and get it back on the grid in time for it to run? Because, uh, well, you know, you've got a lap to kind of get it doing. So that was off over there. Uh, while Chris was trying to change tyres, uh, there was the battle of the two B-Class cars, uh, the BRZ and the RX-8. They were, they were running their way through the circuit. Now, again, they weren't actually, I say, battling wheel to wheel, so they weren't costing each other a crazy amount of time. The Mazda, I say significantly, uh, decently fast down these straights. The BRZ, that little bit faster in the corner. They were close together on track, uh, but, I mean, this is good news for white team at the end of the day. They're, they're on, on equal footing with equal cars. They are currently ahead at this stage. So it is, I mean, it's helpful to know. At this point, no one really knows how how anyone is faring exactly, at first because it's early on, but because everyone's in the different classes. Chris had changed tyres and was now coming out uh, <laughs> with the Falcon. Uh, you don't get control of the car immediately, so you have to wait until you can grab control of the car, spin the vehicle around. Now, of course, thankfully, all the action is on the yellow part of the circuit so you can do this uh, and quickly race back to the grid spin the car around again we were trying to go to Chris into trying to drift right into the spot but didn't, that didn't quite happen still not a bad piece of parking to be fair while they all shuffle themselves out because the Falcon has only just about got set as purple team come round to release their next vehicle now the purple cars were going uh, for the reverse strategy, if you like, sent out their fastest car first, then sending out their A-class car. Uh, they were just trying to make as much time as possible, keep themselves out in front. The idea being you'd keep yourself out in front the entire way and not get slowed down at all. Uh, there would be some sneaky strategies from white team trying to launch their front-wheel drive uh, C-class car, while black team would then go send out their race car, uh, their S-class car. Again, another 911 race car uh, being used as the S-class vehicle. And sure enough, I mean, you know, the two B-class cars had run around fairly close together. It wasn't exactly going to be much uh, time for that race car to uh, to go and overtake. And it would go off down the road chasing after the leader. You know, it shouldn't be catching the, the purple team. You can just about see the Falcon in the distance. You know, it's a fair way away, but we know purple are burning their fast cars. Uh, for orange team, uh, well, my objective was to get to as close as possible to that um, uh, Salika as I could, because we'd both been kind of using B and C class cars at the start of this. The Falcon uh, would 
stay at the front, as expected. No no errors from the Ford, and this is, we saw a little bit at Grando, you, just, you can't afford to make any mistakes uh, with, with these cars whatsoever. One little off-track excursion can cost you uh, so much in the grand scheme of things. Uh, the Falcon was doing its thing. Uh, speaking of mistakes, I was pushing hard trying to catch that Celica, trying to make the most of the opportunity. We could put a wheel over the curb in the Hyundai and very nearly lost it. It was a huge wiggle. I did at one, th one moment, thought I was going face first into the wall, but we gathered it all back up, got the car facing the right direction, the, the joys of front wheel drive, you can kind of boot it and hope, and yeah, got the car going again, but it hadn't really been a great run for me in this one. We hadn't really closed the gap that we wanted to. Uh, Purple were now going to be sending out their B-class cars. They were gradually getting slower. Uh, the, the black team, their race car, had done a good job of catching up, and they would now send out their A-class car, the Lexus LFA. Now, that meant Purple and black team had C-class cars to finish this one, while uh, our orange team and the white team had the S-class car. So these needed to build as big a gap as they could, or I guess maintain as big a gap as they could because there were going to be faster cars coming from us and everything. I hadn't really done amazingly well in this one. White team would launch their A-class car, their Porsche, with a little bit of a shove from the Ferrari while we would launch our <laughs> orange team car. I mean, that, that, was, that, that was a real gap, I say, at that point. That was the gap between, between the teams. We hadn't had a great first couple of runs in that one. We'd left a lot of work for Shadow to do with the, with the BMW to try and chase down that Porsche. So, yeah, uh, that's, that, that, was the, that was the size of the gap with essentially the same strategies having played out. It wasn't looking great, uh, particularly for us in this one. Uh, further round, Purple Team were still in the lead, but it was looking dicey. Ideally, <laughs> ideally Art would not let Danger Man's Lexus pass, but th there's a class difference between the pair of them here. And if you know, <laughs> you know, if you could slow it down as much as possible, the Clio tries to defend, but in the end is a little bit futile. It's a good dummy actually uh, sold from the Lexus. Would get to the inside, would get the pass completed, and that would put the Lexus into the lead. Cost maybe a little bit of time to the LFA. Again, no, no crazy time losses, but still a bit of time would have gone and these needed as big a gap as possible they were going to have c-class cars being chased down by the fastest cars available to us essentially uh with the a-class car battle aaron would keep the porsche uh, in the sort of lead of that one keeping a gap back to the bmw even if that m1 was closing in uh, a little bit towards the end of the lap so the handover as we rounded the final corner. Oh, I've done a good job of keeping the Clio close to that Lexus through the twisty section, but it was a little bit of an iffy start for the S2000 and the MX-5 absolutely launched away from the line. Uh, I will get a hazard, I guess, more focus on power with this car than handling. <laughs> it was surprisingly rapid uh, getting that thing, getting that thing going, getting that thing off the line, but the MX-5 would lead the way, and they weren't going to be immediately fighting one another, so they were sort of free to make as much lap time as they could but then they were going to need to because about to be unleashed were the two S-Class cars. Shadow had done a good job of reeling in some of the gap uh, as the BMW crossed the line. Now, uh, White Team had Longbow in the Ferrari. That's one of the PI drop cars. A uh, huge amount of grip in the 599XX Evo but no straight line speed compared to Grumples' quad rotor Porsche that had a lot of straight line speed. Now I should point out the Porsche was running a wide body kit. However, Forza replays in their infinite brokenness don't show upgrades on the cars. So <laughs> that Porsche does have the wide body kit and huge race tires. So it has got a lot of well, it has, it has got a lot of grip. Not as much as a 599, you know, XX Evo thing, but it has still got a good amount of grip and huge straight line speed. So <laughs> you can see the 911 is right there having a look. But it is slightly I say stuck behind. It has got to find a way past the Ferrari at the end of the day. This is the lap that matters. Not only have got to find a way past the Ferrari, but they've also got to clear the cars ahead. You can see the purple car in the distance. Uh, it is looking a little bit vulnerable, is the S2000, as we round uh, this section. Well, this is where the Ferrari is going to be quickest, able to carry a lot more corner speed, but then as we head up the hill, there's going to be the power of <laughs> that incredibly wacky Quadrosa Porsche. Purple are in trouble here. There's no chance you're going to be able to fend off two S-Class cars at this point. The S2000 is about to be overtaken as the Ferrari will uh, move up into second. The Porsche would follow suit into the next corner. The real question was how far away was the MX-5? I mean, there it was, 
but it's not far. It's not far for the Mazda. There may only be a couple of quarters to go. However, that's not going to be enough to stop the charging Ferrari. He head through the twisty bit. There's contact between the pair of them. The Mazda's gone sideways. It catches it, but flicks it the other way. He crumples his Porsche, gets taken out of the process, and everybody's round. No one can get stopped in the final corner. Purple team goes and takes the lead as everyone is scrambling desperately to try and get some power down. There's more contacts between the Porsche and the Ferrari. <laughs> Ferrari's gone round, and it's a track race across the line, which would just about go the way of Orange team in the scruffiest finish. Uh, we, we could imagine everything fell apart. This is actually from on board with Grumple's car. So Lombo gets it wrong over the crest, bumps the Mazda that sends it into a spin. Grumple's tries to avoid it but can't, and in trying to get it stopped then for the final corner ends up in the back of the Ferrari. Everyone spins around to get going. The S2000 has the lead. The Porsche has crazy acceleration, ends up in a gap where there's, well a closing wall and there's a fair bit of push and shove going on in that one. Yeah. <laughs> Absolute crazy. I mean, this is from from on board the car. I mean, I'm not sure what the stewards would say about any of this, to be honest. The Porsche does technically cross the line first, just ahead of the S2000, uh, with the Mazda ending up in third. I mean, it's a remarkably close finish, if incredibly scruffy. If incredibly scruffy indeed. <laughs> <laughs> All of that is unlucky for Longbow. Just a Mazda is in the wrong place at the wrong time, uh, starting that one. And then we move on to the third and final uh, round. We head to the Yas Marina circuit. Uh, now, the, the replays stopped showing, or livery stopped loading properly at this point, so there's a little bit of confusion. Purple car is correct. Uh, the, <laughs> uh, the, the, the Gordon Murray, the GM50, whatever, that would be... Uh, that is actual purple team. The Porsche is white team. The black Camaro is orange team. And the black Shelby is black team. It, it, yeah, just go with it. It's a bit of a pain. However, we'd managed to start this race with everybody in different classes. Purple was sending out their S-class car. Uh, white slash blue was sending out their A-class car. Our, our team was sending out our B-class car. While black team was sending out their C. So... Okay, a little variety of strategies, but it did mean, while well, there was a big slide from G50, it did mean that everybody was able to focus on their own race at this point. You weren't going to have to worry about battling, you weren't going to be slowed down overtaking anybody, or anything like that. You could just focus on drive your lap as quickly as possible, and, I say, sort of hope for the best in, in, in this one. Uh, I think the, the Camaro did a good job in this one. Did a good job of, of gapping the C-Class car at this stage. Uh, you know, you're never going to be able to do any heroics when you're an entire class down. You can, you can, you know, stay closer to the car ahead. At, th at this stage of the race, when everyone's in different classes, it was yeah, just do, do everything you could. Drive as fast a lap as you possibly could and don't put it in a wall. So as we would go to the handover, there would then once again be a mixture of cars uh, being sent out in all of this. Uh, we would have Purple Team, they were going to be sending out their, uh, I think it was their B-Class car up next. Uh, White Team, they're going to be sending out their C-Class, uh, send out the send out the Camaro. So they built a nice sort of uh, gap early on. Then you send out some of your slower cars and uh, sort of hope that it doesn't get interrupted. Uh, our Orange Team, we would then go and send out our C-Class car as well. No real harm in running that C-Class. Like, we were running the same car at the same time as White Team, but it didn't really matter because they were so spread out on circuit from the strategy call at the moment. Uh, wasn't any crazy issue. And then we would have Black Team sending out their S-Class car uh, for the second run. So all the time, I say all the time, kind of lost at the start. They would then now go and uh, recover. Uh, the, the Asmarina circuit, I mean, you'd get away with some fairly straightforward overtakes down these straights. We can see here, though, the Enzo. I mean, it's not really losing much time through this section, but even, like, one corner, if you get caught a little bit awkwardly uh, against a C-Class car, for example, uh, could cost you much, much nicer if you can get it positioned so that you can uh, run away <laughs> down a straight or overtake down a straight. Uh, up at the front, Purple Team. Purple Team were liking the strategy of... Uh, you know, sort of lead away. They spent a lot of time in the lead, but that didn't necessarily translate to the helpful bits towards the end of the race, but they were leading again. The Enzo was going to be closing in at this stage, but uh, it was going to be too far back. It was, the, the, the Enzo wasn't going to be taking the lead away 
at this particular juncture. So for Orange Team, we were just getting faster. Uh, once again, we were going for the get faster and faster as you go through. In fact, there was a two S-Class, only two S-Class cars going to be finishing. Purple Team would do a bit of a launch start for their Mura. Uh, we also, uh, see, we did, I did a push start. I used my Delta to push start the Sylvia. It, it was becoming a, becoming a theme. Uh, <laughs> it would be the C-Class uh, Lamborghini that would uh, lead the field away. Uh, the Black Team had been doing a good job, though of closing in. Now, these two, both these teams had the A-Class cars to finish. So they were leading the way and they needed to keep, to have as big a gap as possible from the other teams uh, because we had the S-Class cars to finish. And as they would go battling down towards the hairpin, it would be the black team that would uh, take the position. It was the B-Class Lotus against that C-Class uh, Mura, and uh, that was good news. It was looking, you know, it's good news for the black team, looking good for them. Uh, further back, now this was again another important battle. It was another mi class mismatch, though. Uh, orange team were doing well. My A class Delta was up against a B class uh, Lamborghini, the, the Espada. Uh, we would take that place, and we weren't, you know, we we're only about a third of the way through the lap. Both of us had. S-Class cars to finish with, so this was a big game for us. If I could keep this sort of pace up, keep this momentum going and build a nice little gap, it makes life so much easier for our S-Class car. And in fact, at this stage I was the fastest car on the track. I had the A-Class car against a field of lower class vehicles, whether they be B or C-Class, as we would reel in the <laughs> Lamborghini uh, as the sun starts to set over the Asmarina circuit. Uh, yeah, if we could find a way past this one, it would just make, I say make life, makes life easier and easier for us. That means one of the one of the teams has an A-class car and we are ahead of it. Things were looking good. Things were looking good for the orange team as we would go to the final handover. The two S-class cars, a Falcon uh, V8 supercar and a Viper race car uh, would be up against a Supra and an Aston Martin. Black team would hand over with the lead uh, with this one, but the Supra was going to have to deal with that chasing down uh, of the of the Viper. It would kind of be almost a two <laughs> Almost a two-group uh, race. Purple would hand over third ahead of the, the white team's S-Class car. It's a similar sort of gap as had been handed over uh, in the lead. So, Impega would set off with that V8 supercar trying to chase down. And I mean, it was always going to just be a matter of time uh, in this one. Purple hadn't, hadn't got the lead, hadn't got the gap that they needed realistically to be able to fend off for the V8 Supercar. Honestly, not quite sure how White Team had ended up quite so far down in this one. Uh, the, the, their other class cars must just not quite have been fast enough around this circuit, because uh, their S-Class car was uh, quite a long way back, actually, uh, from the from the Orange Team's vehicle. And sure enough, down the first of the long straights, it would be the Ford that would go for the manoeuvre and would move into that third place. Up at the front, it would be, well, the next straight that really, <laughs> the Supra, they couldn't, it just couldn't resist. It really couldn't resist the might of the Viper. Black team had not got a big enough lead in all of this uh, to defend against that dodge. Uh, an orange team had, I mean, that strategy had worked perfectly for us around here. Uh, <laughs> the previous two races had actually been immensely close, but at this one, everything had worked out incredibly well for us, and we would have a big enough, well, I say, uh, have a nice comfortable gap, really, heading through this final you know, few corners. Nothing realistically that, uh, outside of a big mistake, that that Supra could do. The real question now was, could the V8 supercar catch the Toyota as we rounded the final couple of corners. There was no doubt about uh, the victor in this. The Supra did bump the wall. I see a few cars bump the wall through this final section. Uh, but it would, it would not be enough to slow down the Supra. Orange team would take victory. And while the Ford was catching quickly, it wasn't going to be enough. The Supra would take second place as there was a celebratory donut from, <laughs> from, the, from the Viper in all of that. I think it was Shadow driving the Viper this time around. Um, yeah, it would be victory for the orange team. A much cleaner race and a much cleaner victory. An incredibly well-executed race for orange team in that one. Uh, but uh, there we go. That is some um, 
some relay racing on Forza Motorsport. Oh, it's good fun. It's good fun. It's, it's nice being it's nice being back, being able to do this and being able to, even if they don't really work very well, they do work just about well enough to do this with the replays. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I do like the relay races on Forza. I'm sure we'll come back to do some more of this, especially uh, when we can get a little bit funkier, a little bit fancier uh, with the rules and everything. But uh, yeah, it's always interesting seeing what strategies play out, what strategies work and what, what strategies don't uh, in this. Had there not been a big kerfuffle at the end, uh, Orange team probably weren't going to win uh, Kyle Lamy. There would have been an interesting drag race between the Ferrari and Porsche because that, that 599 was not very fast in a straight line and the Porsche was. Uh, but I think ultimately White team probably should have won at that point, but for <laughs> but for a uh, inconveniently placed MX-5. Uh, but, uh, yeah, and the Burberry got very close in, in the first race. It is interesting seeing how these how these strategies work. Some races, just some cars don't, don't suit, don't quite work as you expect. You end up out of sequence and, and too far behind. But uh, yeah, these are really good fun to do. I hope you've enjoyed this video. It's nice to be back, being able to finally do these. That, though, is going to be it from me. Thank you all very much for watching, and until next time, a uh, goodbye.